In this video, we're going to show you how to get into DocuSign from inside of Command. So this is a, another video. If you haven't watched the video on how to set up DocuSign in Command, you'll want to check that out first. And you're going to do that under Settings in the upper right-hand corner. So I've already done that, and I've also added a contact and created an opportunity. Those three things are needed before you're ready to do this. To get to DocuSign, under the Documents tab of this opportunity, I'm going to have the option to go to transaction. Now, in the event you subscribe to dot loop in the future, this button will also be able to point you to dot loop if that's the one you want to use. So we're going to let the agent choose which system they want for the documents. And down below, this is the list of all that's required or conditionally required from the market center for compliance. So compliance will now happen inside a command while you, the agent, can give your consumer whichever document signing experience you want. So I'm going to click go to transaction and this is going to make you sign into your DocuSign account. So make sure you save that username and password to the browser. You may even want to make it the same as your system one so you remember it quickly. This is now taking me into a room in DocuSign. And a room is where all this stuff is going to live together with your documents and everything here. So the first thing you want to do before you add a document is come to details. This screen, you're going to want to come here and edit it and make sure you fill in everything that's required. And the more information you fill in, the more it will auto fill in your contracts. So spend a few seconds here to just say, okay, here's the name of the information. Here's what everything is. Location, I typed in the address already, but if I needed to add more, I could. I could put property type and information if I need to here. I can add listing details. So for this listing example, I'm going to put the listing date, expiration date, and a list price so that that will autofill into my listing contract. You can enter any offer details if you're under contract. High bid confirmation, that's if anyone put offers in on this property. Closing details, anything you need to know about this, deed to the seller, what's happening here. Additional information, any seller concessions, outside referral, any information you want to have in there, and then property details around taxes, square footage, bedrooms, bath, and information. On the right-hand side is the people. So here is seller one, which I put in as myself as a test. You've also got seller two. I can put it in Mickey Mouse and have that be a test. Then listing agent one, which will be me. Listing agent two, if you're a co-listing on this. Buyer one, when you're ready for that under contract. Buyer two, and then the buyer agent one and buyer agent two. So the left side is the details about the property and the right side is all about it. And when you're done, you click save. That will save the details and then when you do a document, it's going to automatically fill in the document for you. We are now already done with the details and now I'm ready to add documents. So when you're in documents, it's going to have a folder for the room docs right here. And to add a, full, a document, I'm going to come to add up in the right hand corner. So you can add it from the computer if it's something like a PDF or a file you want to add. DocuSign forms we're going to do here in a second. That's going to be where it's got it autofill and fillable. And then I can do the DocuSign signatures. Zip Forms is here in case your board doesn't have the ability to bring your forms in yet with DocuSign. Zip Forms may have those forms available to bring in for you. I've also got online storage between these three services. So if I had a file I wanted to access from Google Drive of a contract, I can also do that here. So let's click on DocuSign Forms. When this opens, you're going to get two options as far as getting your documents if they're in DocuSign. So if your market center hasn't brought everything over yet, your market center MCA should be working with DocuSign to ensure they have all the forms that they need. And DocuSign will work with us to make sure that these are all made fillable and signable. So the first thing is DocuSign forms library. This is just forms, no signatures. It'll be ready to go. So we've already connected in Florida with the Florida Association of Realtors and these three boards. So in my area, this is the main one I want to use for my market center. However, if I choose a document from here, so if I said there and chose one of these documents, they will be fillable. They will not be signable yet because they won't have an auto signature. So if I choose one from here, I have to add the signature when I send it to the client. To save you time, you actually want DocuSign Forms groups 
So the groups are going to be packages of these forms put together. And when I choose the forms, it's going to have the different packets and groups together for me. So I've got one for buyers here. I've got one for listings. It's going to give me the option for all the forms for a listing or a listing packet based on what Keller Williams and my market center would say would be the best documents to have. So I'll say listing forms for this example as a listing. Here is going to have all the different contracts you might need for a listing and the addendums and everything needed on this side. So I will say, how about we're listing this property and I've got the exclusive brokerage listing agreement and you've got these different ones here to select. So for this one, I actually want to be the single agent with the right to consent to transition to a transaction broker. So I'm going to choose this option. Now that's just my choice. Check with your broker on which form you want to use. I can add more things in here. So if I have that one, I can also say, you know what, let's get the property disclosure in here. And I can have the residential property disclosure added as well. So I'm going to add these two documents to the system. So once you've chosen your files and you come to add, they will all live here. Now, what we're going to do next is actually edit one of these. So I'm going to come into the exclusive right of sale listing agreement, and we're going to fill this in. If you edit your details first, this will auto populate some of the details into the contract for you. So you'll see it already brought in the name of the sellers, the company brokerage's name, our dates for the authority to sell, the description, some of the price stuff. So remember, the more information you fill in under details, the more it autofills for you. However, I can still put some stuff in here like what are the financing terms? How about cash and conventional? I can add some stuff in here like the use a lockbox option, withhold verbal offers, um, seller does not authorize, leave that one alone. You want them to authorize it, but I don't want them to write comments. Right, so get with your broker on how to fill out the contract. I'm just showing you that you can come in here and fill it in. And since we're in this view, I'll show you as well, if you wanna see a thumbnail of each page, you click here. And under other actions right now, I can finish this later and learn more about it. So this is a basic filling in tool. When you package this together, is gonna to be where you can add boxes and signatures, and that's another step. So if I'm done, I click save and close. And now I have made sure that that document is filled in and ready to go. And if it was this other one, I can click inside here to go as well. Okay, now that we've filled in the contracts, we've created our room, we're inside of DocuSign, now we're going to package these together to have them signed. So I'm going to sit there and click the little circle of each of these and you're going to get some options. Up above, I can copy these if I need a copy of the file. I can move it to another folder if I want to. I can email this to somebody just to email it. I can combine these together as one PDF. I can DocuSign it, which is what we're going to do next. You can archive, unarchive, and delete. So we're going to DocuSign these and package them together, which is going to create for us an envelope to send our client these documents. So it's packaged these together, and the envelope starts with a name. So the default is please DocuSign, so you'll put something else in here. I might say 123 Main Street or whatever the address is for this example, so the client knows that this is what you're doing. You will notice it's already brought over my documents. If I want to preview them, I can view them here and download a copy or print. So it's just showing me what I have. You also can get more forms from the room if they're there and you miss some. You can use a template if you've created a template for any of these. And you can come under more and upload a file or get it from online storage. So this is just your ability to make sure you've got all your documents together in one envelope to send the client. Next, you're going to add recipients. So the best way to do this is choosing pre-tagged roles because that will match what the contract says it should be and what the person is. You can also choose room participants. However, in my testing, it doesn't always match the field with the form. So use pre-tagged roles. This will tell you based on the state forms, we're looking for seller one, seller two, buyer one, buyer two, right? So seller one will be me in this case for my personal account. Seller two, will be Mickey Mouse, so see how I'm matching these. And then the listing associate will be me as the agent, which I've got my KW email address there. So if those are the three people I'm gonna have signed, I'm gonna add those selected, and it's gonna put them here. 
The cool thing that's different about DocuSign is you can actually choose what order they sign. So right now it's everybody signs at the same time and I just send it to them. However, if you want to control this more, you can make sure that's signing one. I'll make them sign number two. And then I as the agent will be the final signing. So that means James has to sign first and then it sends it to Mickey. Then Mickey signs it and then it sends it to me to sign. So you can have it control the order as well. If you need to change who signs versus viewing or gets a copy or specific, specify someone to send this to, here's some options there as well. And more just says you can do an option for add access and add a private message if you want to. Then you've got your message. This is going to be how the email comes through. So make sure you put a subject in there, 123 Main Street, listing documents. I'm going to put a message here. Here are the contracts. Please look them over and contact me if you have any questions. And you might put your name there, Jay. So I've now made an envelope name, made sure my documents are here. I have added all the different people and then I put together my email and I'm now ready for the next step. So when I click next, now I've noticed sometimes it takes you two clicks. See how the first one got it ready and the second click will actually open up DocuSign's signature system. This is where you actually start using the app of DocuSign. Now you'll notice I have three color tabs here and the system right now is showing me as James is initial one. So you can even view it as each person. So if I want to see all the initials for Mickey Mouse, for J, and notice how the tools on the left change for color. So if I need to add any fields like signature or a name or a text box or a initial box, I can add those and it will be the right color for that person. So here, because it was a group, DocuSign has automatically added all the initial boxes needed and correctly identified for me. So you're just gonna verify that these are correct. Remember, I'm not in here to edit and change this. I'm just here right now to do some signatures. This is gonna be the same tool you'll use if it's a blank PDF and you wanna make it fillable. All these items are simply a drag and drop a field over. So we'll do that as a separate video in its own right. So here I've got everybody ready. And if you wanna preview what this looks like, one of my favorite things to do is click recipient preview. So if I click this, right now it's looking as seller one, here's what seller one is gonna see when they get the system. So it's gonna say, please review documents, and this is you pretending to be the client. To click start, it's gonna take them to the first box. Now this is gonna say, hey, if I click here, it will go to the next one. Don't worry, you're not actually signing it, it's just giving you an example of what the client will see. I think this is gonna be great if you need to show your client how easy it will be for them to sign on their own device. By the way, up at the top, I can switch this from a computer to a tablet mode to a phone mode if you want to see what it's going to look like on the phone and every device. So I really like this feature. By the way, I can switch it between what Mickey Mouse will see. So Mickey Mouse's is going to be a blue tab and say click here, start signing. Now in our world, it's blue. For them, it'll be yellow, right? Click, click, click. See how easy it will be for them to sign. I can also look at it as me, the agent, what am I going to have to sign? So I won't have as many fields as them, and I'm going to be able to say start. There's my signature. I'm adding my little boxes here. This is for the listing contract. Add it, add it, add, and I'm done on that part, and that would be them being finished. So again, this is a preview. It's not actually signing it, and I really like that. Okay, so if everything was ready, then I'm now ready to send this off, have it all packaged together and send it to the client. It says you've sent it, you're done, and under envelopes now, you're gonna see that I'm completed one or you're waiting on others. So today on the 11th, we're waiting for others to sign. Here's the number of documents, here's the number of people in there, and now it's packaged together and sent. Go in as the consumer and sign a listing contract. So I'm acting as the consumer right now, and this is the email that I got for my DocuSign. So it would have said DocuSign Main Street listing documents. I'll get this little DocuSign review documents. It'll have my message here, and this will have a disclaimer at the bottom, and I can review the documents. This is going to open up a window as the consumer to be able to fill this in. 
So I'm now looking as the consumer to fill it in. It's going to ask him, do you want to allow the browser for a day? I'll say allow. Please review on these documents with Jay Sturmack with Keller Williams. I'm going to agree to electronic signature and click continue. It's then going to say, okay, let's start. And it's going to take me to the first box. And when I click here, it's your ability to type it in, draw their own signature or upload a signature if they have one that they want. So I kind of like this signature. I'm okay with it. If the person wants to, they can draw their own. So I'm going to adopt an initial and it's automatically going to add it. See how it did it there. Click the next one next next and it just clicks through each of these and the system won't let them go to the next option unless they filled everything in so i've added these again now with this one this is a seller disclosure so adding this form means i might want to go back through and maybe fill things out so this is fillable if they're doing the seller's disclosure and want to type things in they can fill this out here Notice it automatically added a date and time. It brought everything in. So this is just an example, as I said. I'm the consumer, and when I hit finish, I'm now done as the consumer. And it will let me create an account. So I can create my own account or just say no thanks. Just like we did with Dotloop, I would say they should create an account. So that way they can always come back and review files. But we're going to store that for them and give it to them in the consumer experience. So that's what happened as the client... As the agent, when I come back here under documents, it's going to now show me that I've got a version of this that will be signed. So when I come to history, it says it was sent, right? And I refresh the screen, and now it's going to show you that it was signed, and the first person is signed, now it's waiting on others. So in this example, that means it would be waiting on Mickey Mouse to sign, which is not an actual email address. So now it's kind of stuck there waiting for him to sign. See how it says who signed first, who's second, and waiting on here. So this is just your ability to see who is signing, where you're at in the process, and that is how you package it together and how you e-sign as the consumer. Sign. Now I'm going to sign as the agent so you can see what you have to do on your side. So in my world, that means I got an email saying, okay, now it's my turn to please DocuSign 123 Main Street and the listing info. So I'm going to review the contract as the agent, and it's going to open up DocuSign here, allow, and it already has my info, so I'm going to say continue, and I'm going to start signing as the listing agent. So click here, click here, just like you would on any other system, right? It's just going to the right field, type things in, and if I need to initial anything, I am done. So once it's finished, it'll say you're done, click finish. So I, as the agent, have finished my portion. And you'll see there's the client already done with theirs. I'll just say no thanks for now for this example, and I'm done. What happens in DocuSign's world is when I refresh this, the system's going to say, okay, your envelope is now completed. So now when I come to documents, I'm going to have this all ready and have a signed copy of the documents for me to now bring into command. So if I am the agent and this is all done, by the way, you'll notice under history, I was waiting for it to sign, refresh here, and now it's been completed. I have signed it and everything is now done. Now here is your certificate of everything being signed. So if you've never seen this before, DocuSign gives you a nice document telling you who signed what, what was their timestamp, I really like that because that would be great in case there's ever a lawsuit. Here will be the original document and then there'll be a signed version. So notice this one says signed next to it and the originals are here as the form. So now that I've got these signed, I can come back to command. I can now look at what do I need to add. So these are my required things for compliance under documents. And here's the residential listing agreement that is required. I'm going to add a file and I'm going to go from manually added the file to DocuSign, and it will automatically pull up my room. You'll notice here are all the different things in my DocuSign. So for this one, I want to have the signed exclusive right for the listing, and I'm going to assign this here, and that's going to automatically bring in the file. You can preview that is the right one by clicking the little PDF, and this will show you a preview of the file. 
so that you can see, okay, everything's been signed and dotted. And that way I am now ready to, if everything was done, I'd be ready to submit it to the MCA. So again, we went through e-signing as the consumer. We then went through e-signing as the agent, came in here, verified it was done, went back to command, and we were able to upload the file really easily by just saying, here it is. So there's also one here for seller's disclosure, add file, click DocuSign, here's the seller property disclosure, and there's the version of it that's signed, assign, and just like that, I've added the file from DocuSign to command. If this is all done, now I'm ready for compliance to say, okay, I've added all the files that are required, and I'm able to submit to the MCA. Now today, it lets you submit it. In the future, it will pay attention to the required or not required and will warn you, oops, you're missing something, which is going to save us all a lot of time. Are you sure you want to submit this for review? I'm going to say submit. And that would be me submitting this document to compliance. I want to show you that now I've already submitted to the MCA all of my documents from my opportunity in command. And you're going to notice that it was rejected. So now it shows submitted. But now I'm going to see next to any of my documents if they were rejected. So here, this is rejected. And the warning in the message is going to say, oh, you're missing the signature on line 36. Now, I can go ahead and preview this, which will tell me the comment as well here. And go see, oh, you know what? You're right. I'm missing that on line 36. Okay. Now, it'd be my job to go back to the transaction right get a copy of that document so that i then can have them sign it so here's the one here i'm going to click this button i'm going to copy it so i can leave it here under the review so active rooms and then i'll choose my room so active room and this is listing 194 copy it in here so here is the copy and now I'm able to come into this package this together we're going to docu-sign it over to the person who needs to sign so for this example I'm going to say uh, 123 Main Street again I've already got the document in here. We're going to choose the participant. So for this example, I'm going to say I need the seller to sign. It's got everything here. Please initial, please initial next to line 36. I've got it packaged together. I click next to get to the signing part of it. Click next again to actually open DocuSign. Here it is, and now I'm able to add that signature field. So this is a flattened PDF, and now I'm ready to say, okay, I wanna add it to line 36. She said I have to initial. Here's the initial box, I will drag it over. By the way, you can also resize this, so if I want it larger or smaller, I can add this here. Come to the formatting if I need to change this size. A data label if I need to, any tool tips, add a location, save this as a custom field to use as my own later, and send. Now, again, this will work the same way for any PDF. So for this example, if I was done, I could just say send and have them initial that one signature. However, this is a PDF editor right now, so I can add things like a text box, right? And I can resize that box to fit here. I can fill it in or type it in here. I can add a checkbox if I need to. Let's add it here and let's double click. By the way, you can hit this little plus sign to just simply add another checkbox, which is really cool. Click, add another plus sign, I add another one. So I like that feature, that's really neat. I can also then delete these, just hitting the delete button. I can also add a drop down, some formulas, an approve button, date signed, initialed, signature, so for this example, I might have to put a date signed here. And I'm going to send this to myself to test it out. Now this is going forward. I'm going back as the consumer. So here I am. Please initial this document. So this is me sending it to the consumer. Review that document. It's going to open up DocuSign for me. 
Do you want to allow location? Yes. James, are you sure you want to electronically sign? Do you agree to our terms? Continue. Start. One initial. This is signature you want. Yes, adopt an initial. It's now been signed. You're done. Select finish. Click the finish button. I can create an account if I need to or just say no thanks. And then I can come back into the system, refresh my envelopes. It's now been completed and when I'm in command, now I can come here to the three dots and actually replace this with the newest version. So I'm going to replace, come to DocuSign and I'm going to look for the newest one. So this tells me this is the one you've already uploaded, Jay. And then it's going to tell me, here's your other documents. So I'm going to want to, I'm guessing it's going to be this one. I've replaced it. I can verify this is the right one. Does it have that signature box? Yes, with the date and the time. So that's perfect. Now I'm able to resubmit to the MCA. I click resubmit. Are you sure? Submit. And now I've resubmitted to them for compliance.